Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today we're going to start talking about central bank behavior, particularly loss functions. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Once again, we are going to be talking about Bill, but now Bill is our central banker and Bill wants to stabilize the economy. So the questions we're asking with this loss function is, well, how exactly does Bill measure success? What exactly do we mean when we say Bill wants to stabilize the economy? Well, the way we can represent what Bill wants to do and the way Bill measures success is with this loss function L. This loss function is going to be the square difference between the inflation and some inflation star or the inflation target of the central bank and the square difference between the output gap and the ideal or the targeted output gap whatever bill wants to do generally in the u.s we have a dual mandate so we'll use that dual mandate to fill in this example so based on that dual mandate bill would want inflation to be two percent so this pi star would be two percent and bill wants neither a boom nor a recession so we would say that the output gap should be zero now again notice i've said the square difference that's because if inflation is too high, Bill gets sad. If inflation is too low, Bill also gets sad. If the output gap is too high, so we're in a boom, then this difference is positive and Bill is unhappy. If we are in a recession, then this output gap is below Y star and that squared difference becomes positive, so we also incur some loss. So the point of the loss function is we want to minimize loss. Bill wants to minimize the amount of loss that he feels, and if he makes it as small as possible, that is how he is going to measure success in stabilizing the economy. The way we are going to solve for the loss function or solve for Bill's behavior in the economy is we're going to add this loss function to a three equation ISLM model. So we've got some IS curve. Notice that we've got some shocks, ETIS. We've got an LM curve and we've got some shocks to inflation. We're going to have these shocks be IID mean zero. So just some like random white noise shocks. That'll make sense when we get into solving this in the next couple of videos. Let's go ahead and preview some of the results that we expect to see from this three equation ISLM model model, particularly central bank behavior. Now what the central bank should do is they should fully respond to observed IS shocks or from that blue equation above. They should partially respond to observed LM shocks or shocks to inflation. The reason is there's sort of a trade-off between inflation and output. So if I respond to inflation, I am going to have to put the economy into a bit of a recession. So I don't want to fully correct for inflation because that's going to give me output pain, but I can fully correct for output pain or output shocks, which are IS shocks. So again, we'll see that result in the next video, but hopefully this gives you a good overview of what the central bank loss function is. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.